Our feast this evening of Christ the King is such a rich feast, and I'm going to limit myself to only three things so we can all get home here on time. So I'm going to give uh, essentially kind of three vignettes on kingship for my homily, three different ideas. And those ideas are the ransom of kings, um, the king as lawgiver, and therefore what an outlaw is, and kingship by kinship, okay? So the first one is uh, a king being bought by ransom. So early on in the medieval period, knights and soldiers figured out very quickly that it was much, much better to hold nobles, princes, and kings captive rather than kill them, because if they kill them, they're of no use. But if they hold them captive, they can make a lot of money. So what they began to do was they began to capture knights and kings and princes in battle and to hold them captive for a ransom to cause their people, either their, their fiefs or their kingdom, to pay money for the release of their king. This was very advantageous to kings and princes and nobles, and so they began to dress very extravagantly in battle. They began to wear uh, colorful um, clothing and, and heraldry to mark themselves out as, hey, look at me, I'm a noble, please don't kill me. <laughs> it's way better to take me captive. Right? And so it became very common for kings to be held captive and for their people to have to pay a ransom. The most famous example of this is King Richard the Lionheart of England, who while he was out on one of the crusades was captured, held for ransom, and the nation or the kingdom of, of England paid a high price to get their beloved king back. The early church fathers loved to talk about our captivity to sin in a very metaphorical way as being captives or being slaves of, of Satan and of God or Christ on the cross paying the ransom for our captivity. Right? That what it means to be born in original sin, to be sinners, is that we're held captive by sin. And what Christ does on the cross is he pays our ransom. So, on the cross, there's a very peculiar form of kingship happening because kingship is being flipped on his head, right? Normally, a people pay for the freedom of their king. We are a people for whom the king offers the ransom to free his own people. And the ransom that he offers is his own life, right? What a very peculiar kingship and king we celebrate this evening. A king who dies as a ransom, who offers himself to free his own people and not vice versa versa. So that's um, ransom. Now the idea of an outlaw. Right? One of the most important functions that a king gave in the Middle Ages was that he gave law and order. He gave the people a law, and the king's kingdom was wherever his authority and his law was respected. And this was a very, very good thing and a very welcome thing. Because you have to think that in the 1200s, in the 1300s, they didn't have security cameras, they didn't have a police force, they didn't have many, many things that keep us safe today. And life was actually very perilous. There were bandits on the highways, right? It was a very dangerous place to live in the Middle Ages. And so one of the great benefits that a king provided was that he enforced his laws in his kingdom. And that meant that people within the kingdom were certainly restricted in what they could and couldn't do, but it also meant the people within his kingdom were protected, that the law of the king was a very, very precious thing. And one of the most, uh, actually the most worst punishment that you could receive in the Middle Ages was to be named an outlaw. And the word outlaw to us sounds really cool because we think of, of the Wild West and Jesse James and all those gunslingers, but an outlaw was the worst thing that could happen to you because what it meant is that you had committed such a grave crime, you had done something so horrible that the king retracted the protection of law and said that law and order extends to everybody but that person. They're now an outlaw and they can be killed with impunity. Anybody can kill them, can harm them, can rob them without any punishment under the law. Being an outlaw was essentially a death sentence because the king was retracting the law from you. And that was a tremendously dangerous thing by our sins, right? Especially the sin of Adam and Eve. We make of ourselves outlaws, right? That through our sins, we place ourselves outside of God's kingship. We place ourselves outside of God's law. And we place ourselves in a situation of death. 
And so what Christ does by dying for us on the cross is he takes us from being outlaws to being in-laws and the good kind of in-laws, right? Because <laughs> what he does is he restores to us the law that was lost. And he does this by writing the law on our very hearts, right? As Christians, we are no longer subject to the Mosaic law with its many, many prescriptions, but we are subject to the Holy Spirit, right? That he pours his very love into our hearts so that we know what is pleasing to him. We know how to fulfill his commandments because he gives us his grace so that we can do it, right? Every subject of a king is subject to his law, and we as Christians are subject to God's law by our participation in the life of the Holy Spirit that he gives us, right? Through our baptism, he writes his law on our hearts. We are made in-laws and not outlaws. So ransom, uh, outlaws, and finally, the idea of kin kingship by kinship. Right? Most historians believe that the, the origin of kings was born out of tribal leaders and was born out of really essentially the role of a father in a family, in the most primitive society, every, everybody lives according to their family. Their father or their grandfather serves as the leader of that family. And as societies become more and more complex, you have clans, and so there's one grandfather or one uh, tribal leader over that whole clan. And eventually, you get a really big nation and kingdom, and the king serves as essentially a really, really extended father or grandfather over all the people. And part of the reason for this is that much of the ancient kingdoms were kingdoms of people. They were the same type of ethnicity, right? The king of French people was French. The king of Hungary was Hungarian. Part of what it meant to be a king was to sum up in yourself your people and to lead them as a member of that people and as their head. Right? So Christ is a king in the most perfect way because he sums up in himself all that it means to be human. And he makes of himself a head, right? That through baptism, we are baptized into the living body of Christ, of whom he is our head. And so by taking on our humanity, he can become our king because he shares in the same family as us. He's of our people, right? He's a human. So he sums up our humanity. And he also makes of us a likeness to him, that he's a king who not only takes on our likeness, but makes us t draw close to his likeness, that we become his subjects by becoming more and more like him, that we become subjects of such a great king by being and doing essentially who Christ is and what he does, which is to love the Father perfectly, right? Jesus Christ comes to earth, and in his human life, he expresses through his teaching, through his death on the cross, through his resurrection, a perfect love for his Father, and what makes of us his subjects, what makes of us like him, like our king, is that through our baptism, through that dwelling of the Holy Spirit, we too become those who love our Father as well, right? That his king becomes our king, that God the Father reigns and is all in all. Right? So what we celebrate this evening is a really beautiful feast day, that we have such a unique and peculiar king, right? Who dies to ransom his own people, who writes his own law in their hearts, and makes them like himself. And it's that king, right, to whom every knee in heaven, on earth, and under the earth shall bend, and every tongue shall proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord. And that king is our king. And we just rejoice in that this evening, that we have such a marvelous king who loves us, who dies for us, and who draws us close to himself.